What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. So last time we did a construct family tier list because the constructs came out on top of the vote by just a very small margin. Um, but they were only a close second to the Astral Elves. So today we are going to be having a look at this family of heroes. They have been absolutely insane in the last few releases and we've seen the growth um, effect come into the Astral Elves family as well with our newest releases so I think it's really important that we break these heroes down so that you know which of these heroes are the best ones to be looking at maxing or to be going for if you are summoning hard for these heroes so with that all being said let's get right into it let's jump into it we're going to break these heroes down and rank them into tiers Okay, Astral Elves family tier list, here we go. So the first hero we're going to look at is Starwalker. He was the first released hero into the Astral Elves. Um, so he has a lot to live up to being one of the first. I mean, him alongside Sparklight definitely made some waves when they came into the game. Um, so, of course, we know they've got the same family bonus and the same passives. What has now been added to this hero is the fact that he never misses. And that is really important. It really does make them really effective against the Goblins heroes because they give that blind as part of their passive. So the fact that they can never miss is really a big tick in the right box. Um, they also now have an immunity against poison, uh, which has also been quite a big thing at the top of the uh, at the top rankings and things like that. So they are really, really good. OK, their passives, their family bonus. We know that they're really good. Um, but in terms of what he's doing. He is running at fast speed and he does deal damage to all enemies. Granted, it's not a huge amount of damage, so it's 200% damage to all. And then he deals 450% extra damage if the targets have boosted health. It really doesn't come into play all that often. I mean, only if they have boosted health. Um, and the, the extra damage does help, but it's not going to affect you everywhere. So I can't say that he's, you know, complete upper echelon just for that. Um, the, the other bit where he gives the defense down, this is probably the most important part of his skill. So he gives all enemies negative 35% defense for three turns. And if that effect gets removed before the duration ends, the target with the effect obviously suffers 551 damage. I believe that goes up with the limit breaks and emblems. Now, the thing about this hero is, is that he's really, really, really good in equalizer wars he's not as good in other areas but you can really use him to good effect when you pair him up with other heroes um who will give another ailment or give a defense down uh, they'll wipe his one off and then it'll obviously trigger that extra damage which is really what you take this hero into battle for so with that being said, Star Walker is definitely an excellent hero. I would say S tier in majority of areas of the game, but standing alongside the Astral Elves, I can't give him anything more than an A. So we're going to go with an A for Star Walker to get us started. Now, our next Astral Elf that we're going to be looking at is Void Star. So Void Star is a bit more recently released. You can see um, just from the stats on these cards. I know that, you know, they will be buffing these uh, as we go along. Um, but 1,041 team power means that she is one of the newer releases in the Astral Elves. Again, same family bonuses and passives, so we won't go over those all over again. Um, but her special skill is really where it's all at. So uh, we've got this on the card where it says it never misses the targets. Um, we've got the passive with the innate resistance against poison, as I've mentioned. Um, so she deals 620% damage to the target at average speed. That is a huge snipe. Obviously, we know that's a huge snipe. Pretty high attack stat, but she is more defensively built. So it is a humongous start, snipe, but she is running at average speed. So it's probably around about the highest average speed snipe we've got. And then she heals all allies for 40% of the damage that's dealt. So she's a really solid hero, but she is a single target sniper running at average speed. So the fact that you're basically going to be able to kill a single enemy is good. 
but it's not as effective as some of the other astral elves that we have seen as well. So I am, yeah, I mean, let's just look at the last bit. So all allies get 74% defense against special skills for four turns. That's a really solid effect as well. Um, it does need to be dispelled. Um, but again, it is something that you can dispel. So there's no like undispellable attached to it, which I don't think there should be. I think that she is a really, really strong hero. But as far as the Astral Elves are concerned, where Voidstar comes in, I would say a B-grade hero compared to the other Astral Elves. If you just put her anywhere else in the game, you'd, I mean, she'd be an ST hero all day long. And that just shows how strong this family of heroes actually is. Uh, but for me, Voidstar is coming in right at the middle uh, with a B-grade. Uh, now, next hero that we're going to have a look at is <laughs> Moonflower. Oh man, I really wanted to like this hero. In fact, I did like this hero a lot when I did the review on Moonflower and I didn't quite understand the way that this special works. So obviously won't go over the passives and things like that again. Uh, but this is basically a reverse Guardian Hippo. Um, so it does pretty much the same thing just in reverse. So after an enemy casts their special during the next three turns, this character deals 235% damage to all enemies. Now Hippo, Guardian Hippo, is super effective. Just a great hero because you can plan around uh, on offense where you fire off Guardian Hippo's special and then you fire off the specials of all the rest of your heroes and every single time there's an extra 200 and whatever it is percent damage going on the enemy team. The problem with Moonflower is that you cannot time it very well. I mean, you can you know, potentially get it to where one hero maybe fires off their special, maybe two if you're on top of your game and you're lucky in terms of tiles. But the problem is, is that you cannot just completely wipe a whole team and be guaranteed of that. On defense, it's even easier to deal with Moonflower because all you've got to do is wait out that three turns and it usually ends quite quickly. So you can then just save up your special, fire it off once they end and you're good to go again. Or you can dispel the effect um, and take a little bit of damage and then you're good to go after that. Um, so the problem with Moonflower is that there's just far too many counters and Moonflower is not the best offensive hero. So if there's a lot of counters for a hero, you want them to be good offensively. And unfortunately, Moonflower does not have that. Um, so Moonflower is going to be our first D grade. I'm sorry, Moonflower. I really do want to like you. Um, I, 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 I just don't, though. <laughs> so that's where we sit with Moonflower degrade, unfortunately. Now let's move on to our next hero in the bunch. So we've got my boy Sparklight. Sparklight, again, one of the first released heroes I think we saw in the Black Friday summon uh, last year. Um, and uh, just a beast of a hero. I mean, the right class, um, the revived talent on there. I mean, the stats, yeah, maybe they're slightly lower for the Astral Elves now. But again, I think that these heroes will be getting buffs just to keep them relevant. And I think he probably has already, to be fair. I just haven't looked it up right now. Um, but 430% damage to the target and nearby. Now, that is a huge hit. Now, we did just look at, obviously, Void Star. She was like 620 to a single target at average speed. If you spread this 430 to three heroes, that's like 1,200 damage, upfront damage that he's doing. So it's a much higher, much harder hit. And then the target nearby getting the 452 burn damage over four turns. And that burn damage is absorbed as boosted health and they take 45% of the burn damage. So as you increase that, you increase his attack stat, you limit break, you add emblems, you're basically getting a hitter healer that's doing boosted health for the entire team, which is awesome alongside his hit three. And then the fact that the target nearby enemies then reflect status effect buffs to a random character on the opposing team for the following four turns. That effect is excellent. And it's very difficult to cleanse because you don't have that many priority cleansers in this game. You've got a lot of heroes that give a buff and then cleanse. The problem with that is that you've got this reflect on you. So you give the buff and the buff then goes to the opposition team because you've got the reflect 
and then you cleanse away the ailment. So it's it's kind of too late to get that buff from yourself. <coughs> Pardon me. And if you do have um, a healer with a buff that's ready to go, you're going to need to wait for a cleanse before you can fire that hero off. So the fact that he does everything in the right order, the fact that he's a hitter and a healer, his class, everything else he's got going for him, that massive damage as well, I would say Sparklight would, for me, be in the S tier among the Astral Elves. So he's our first S tier hero that we've looked at from the Astral Elves. Now, moving on, uh, the next hero that we have in here is Hammer Clang, the Forge Master for the Astral Elves. Um, she is a solid hero. She is just staunch in every department. Um, there is a little bit of a downfall. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but overall, I really, really like Hammer Clang. Um, so her, she is running at fast speed, which is a big tick in the right box. And obviously, we know about the special skill not missing a target. Uh, but she deals 400% damage to the target. Whoa, sorry guys. <laughs> but I don't have the best recording system in the world, so please forgive me. I'll do my best with what I've got. Um, so she deals 400% damage to the target um, and minor damage to all the other enemies. So it's 200% damage to the whole enemy team, 400% to the target that you hit. Uh, but the, she then increases all damage that all enemies receive by 30% for three turns. That is really, really good and very, very effective. The only problem is, is that we have other heroes that will do the same effect. Granted, they're running at slower speed, um, but they'll do the same effect by 50%, so they'll increase the damage by a higher amount. I feel like in beta, when she was being tested before she was released in the game, she did have that higher damage amount, and she lost it um, when she was released in the game. So she was kind of like a pre-release nerf. And that has kind of gone against her in a, in a pretty big way. So unfortunately, um, that is a downfall for her. Um, the negative attack is good. So giving all enemies negative attack, but it would have been better. I mean, she is giving the damage increase, so it's making it harder to come back from. But obviously, we all know attack down, defense down. Which one's better? Obviously, defense down nine times out of ten, 99 times out of 100. Um, is better unless it's a much higher percentage. So with all of that being said, Hammer Clang is a staunch hero. I'm not going to go so far as to give her a C grade, um, but I would say that I'm going to give her a B grade and I can't give her any higher because I just don't think um, she deserves it um, as far as the Astral Elves are concerned anyway. Um, and then moving on, our next hero in the batch is our one of our newest released heroes actually from this portal. It's Demi Loon. And this is the advent of the growth effect being spread across our newer heroes. I mean, why they had to do it, I have no idea. I'm not the hugest fan of them doing it because it means that you're just adding effects which should be for a specific family to all of the other heroes in the game, which is kind of shitty um, because then it means that there's just very few counters for heroes like this. Um, but let's take a look at him and see what he does. So... First of all, special skill never misses its targets, 495% damage to the target and minor to nearby, running at fast speed. So that is a heck of a lot of damage, nearly 500% uh, snipe plus the minor, 250% to the nearby. He then steals all dispellable buffs from the target and nearby enemies and redistributes them on your allies. So he's kind of like a Hatter effect but he's running at a faster speed. He's dealing a higher amount of damage. The only downside is his damage is only to the target nearby and the buff steal is only the target nearby. But that is a very, very minor disadvantage. Um, the growth effect then, this caster and nearby allies get 340 attack. And of course that lasts for the whole duration of the battle and it can stack on top of itself multiple times. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just an insanely good effect and there's no counters for it at the moment. Uh, the garrison guard can counter wither, but we've got nobody that can counter growth. So with that being said, this guy is an absolute beast. Um, Demi Loon easily makes the S tier for the Astral Elves, one of the best heroes in the game at the moment, in my humble opinion. Uh, now let's move on. Who do we have next? <laughs> Speaking about some of the best heroes in the game, Lemonwood 
I mean, he was so in easy to underestimate upon his release. But the truth about this guy is he is fantastic. An excellent, excellent hero, especially against the Toons. Um, and the Toons are some of the most frustrating defensive heroes that we have out there at the moment. This is probably your best, your absolute, sorry, <coughs> is your absolute best counter to the Toon heroes, Lemonwood. Um, so let's take a look. So Wandering Star Shot, fast speed, 350% damage to the target. Doesn't seem like that much, but then he reduces the mana of the target by 20%. Now, if the target has more than 30% mana after the mana reduction, the special skill repeats targeting a random enemy. Now, what I initially thought this would mean is that the special skill would just target the random enemy and then it would basically stop depending on how far it got. But if nobody else has, like if everybody else is charged up, this guy's just like a machine gun. He will cut them down until they get down to um, that mana sort of threshold. He's just like a machine gun. He just keeps firing and firing and firing until eventually he gets to somebody who doesn't have more than 30% mana and he stops. But if everybody has more than 30% mana, he is just the best mana control hero that we have in the game at the moment. And he deals some pretty serious damage at the same time as well. I've been caught out by this guy more than once, more than twice, probably more than five times. He's just an insanely good hero. Um, so Lemonwood easily gets an S tier as well. Just one of the most fantastic heroes. You'll see him on all the top raid defenses if you guys are looking. Uh, you will you will definitely see lemon wood somewhere in there um, and uh, next on the list is our newest release from this portal so starlass I was waiting for starlass to be released before making this video um, so starlass as we know she's a slow speed hero but she does a huge amount of damage 550 percent damage to the target nearby um, then she automatically does that damage and consumes 75% mana from the hit enemy every time when their mana gets full for three turns. <clears throat> so like a souped up version of Hansel. I have done a review on her recently and I think she is absolutely insane. Um, I think that she does have a slight downfall in terms of the fact that she is most viable in the rush format. Um, and she is going to be a little bit easier to deal with outside of the rush format. So I think that because she does have a few counters, um, although her effect is absolutely insane, don't get me wrong, I think that as far as the Astral Elves go, she's going to be in the B tier. Nah, can't do it. I <laughs> can't do it. She's gonna. I was going to say B, but she's got to be an A tier at least. She can't be in the S tier because she's not quite the best at everything. Um, but even though she is running at slow speed, she's still absolutely insane. So we'll give Starless an A. And the last hero that we have to look at is Dreadstar. She looks like she's supposed to be the queen of the Astral Elves, um, but I'm not seeing it, to be fair, from looking at her card. I'll just tell you that up front. Uh, so if we have a look here, 340% damage to all enemies at average speed. It's a good, hard, heavy hit, which is cool. Um, but then all enemies get negative 30% mana generation for four turns. It's not the greatest effect, but it is a good effect. And then all enemies get negative 74% decrease for any healing received for four turns. Again, not the greatest effect, but it is a good effect and it can be cleansed away. So really what you're looking at with this hero is a hero that deals damage to the entire team, which is a good amount of damage. Uh, but then she gives two effects which can be pretty easily cleansed away. The negative mana generation and the negative decrease for healing received. So if you put her alongside these elves, which is exactly what we're doing today, I would say that we cannot give her anything higher than a C grade. Um, so that is pretty much it for the, for the tiers and the rankings for the Astral Elves. Um, so let's take a look at our tier list. So I'm going to bring that up and we will be back in just one second with the tier list now. So here we have it, our final tier list for the Astral Elves. So in just to recap, in uh, last place, we have Moonflower bringing up the rear with her backwards special. 
or his backwards special. Um, in C, in the C tier, we have Dreadstar, um, who's just doing a boatload of damage, but not too much extra. Um, and then in the B tier, we've got a bevy of heroes. We've got uh, Starless, our newest hero, who doesn't even have a block yet. Um, we've got Hammer Clang and um, Void Star in the B grade. In the A tier, we have Starwalker, our, our first released hero, still an absolute beast. And then for the absolute S tier, the top heroes in the Astral Elves, the ones that you want, um, we have got Sparklight, uh, we've got uh, Demi Loon and my man Lemonwood uh, just owning the top spots there. Um, so that sums it up for the Astral Elves. Um, please do drop us a comment. Let me know if you've got any of the Astral Elves. Let me know where you think they fit in as well. Um, and also drop us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But for now, that is everything. Uh, so I wish you guys all the best and I will see you again in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.